Yes. I'm going to have to watch the tape. Um, a lot of one-handed catches, which drove me nuts, which means they were playing sloppy. Um, we've got a lot of things we've got to get done, but turned it over too many times, which is typical of trying to make hard plays. The one team had nine turnovers and four or five of them unforced. Um, but I think um, we'll be fine. We needed some guys to play with a little more confidence, and they, as the thing got going, they did. But that's going to be important. Kyle, those one-handed catches you talked about, was that showmanship, showboating? No, nah, they're just sloppy. They're just not, you know, they're not into that mode yet. I mean, we fumbled balls to start the game, and, you know, I thought the car had played great. He just didn't make any free throws. I and mean, you can't, you can't play get in there and, and we're throwing you the ball and you miss free throws. But I thought he played great. He played hard. On the other side, Carl offensively looked like probably everything you want, but maybe not he's, defensively. Yeah, he's, he's just not there. coming up with balls. He's not, you know, he'll try to make some heroes plays offensively, but he's learning. I thought he, Devin, Tyler, and Trey, for freshmen, all did pretty well. I thought the vets did well. I mean, Alex started poorly and then started playing better. And, you know, he has been making shots. He just got to create his own swagger. It can't come from me. Um, you know, I'm begging him to shoot those balls. And so, uh, you know, again, we we got some stuff out of it. We got a long way to go. Is there at any point the, the groups of platoons that you – did we see tonight any, at any point the, the guys that split up the way you might do it? Um, you know what, we'll go watch tape. I'll probably try some different combos just to see. I kind of like two freshmen on a team. Uh, two vets on a team or three vets on a team that makes it gives it some balance and, and uh, we're just going to see what happens. I mean, I'm I'm committed to it. Um, it's the best thing for these players, and now we got to make it the best thing for our team. John, Was Alex what, more what comfortable with the twins, John? Was Alex more comfortable with the twins? Do you maybe, think? Maybe, maybe that was it. I mean, I, I thought he missed three one footers. I don't think that had to do with the twins or anything else. And then he missed a couple jumpers, and then he didn't want to make plays. So, Cal Andrew had turnovers. First turn. half, but whichever, even when you change the teams up, it seemed like things ran a little better with him. Is that the case in practice? What was that? Teams seemed to look a little better when he was running it. Whichever team, whatever you put Who? together, Andrew. No, he he had too many turnovers in the first half. He was the pressure came. He put his head down and just went. You can't do that. But again. You gotta understand that we're there's two things that are happening. In a normal situation, I can get by a man and I can get one to the basket. The problem is in this gym, there's two seven footers. There are two well, there's not. There's like three and there's another six ten guy that's jumping out of the building. So all those plays end up being turnovers. Um, the same I was saying with Trey and Alex rebounding. Well, get in there and rebound, yeah, and it's them and two seven footers. And everybody's battling. It's just unusually big and long. Um, and, and affected uh, Tyler a little bit in the second half. I mean, we put, you know, what happened early is we didn't pressure him and he had his way. And then Andrew went up and played him and made it a little different. Well, why? Well, he can go by you, but eventually he's running into big people, like seven foot. Cal, when you're making these platoons, are you primarily concerned with evening out the scoring between the two groups, or are there other things you're looking at first? What, what you well, you want to have a point guard on each group. You want to have some size on each group, and you want to have, all right, which, which, uh, how do they fit together? What I don't want to have is four freshmen on one team. It's just not fair to those kids. Would I ever go with three on one team? Well, the other two would have to be really veterans that are playing well to, for me to do that. What did John, what did you like best about Dakari tonight? He just, he's playing with great <coughs> I mean, he's, he's going after every ball. Um, he has a fight and a fire in him. Got a little tired tonight. Um, but again, you see he hasn't totally cracked it. Uh, he'd been shooting in practice great. He'd been shooting free throws. He's been shooting 15 footers. But now, he went in front of all these people and the popcorn's cracking and it's on TV. And it, the dregs of last year came back a little bit. Well, that's the same with Alex. You've got to work through that. And it can't come from me. 
I mean, it's got to be you working your way through, knowing you worked hard, you deserve to play well. I deserve to play well. I've worked hard. I missed a play, so what? That inner voice has got to start changing on those guys as we go forward. Speaking of like Devin Chuck, the ball tonight, he didn't hit a three, but 9 of 11, I think, overall. Yeah, he missed every free throw, though. He's another one. He shot four for eight from the free throw line. So he and Dakari together shot a whopping 12% from the line. I mean, they were down at halftime for one reason. They missed every free throw, two for 12, and Alex missed three one-footers. Or the, it's a close one-bucket game. Um, but again, I like the competitiveness. I wanted Aaron to do more competitive-wise. Uh, I wanted him to get up and do some things. But, you know, like I said, we got we got a lot of work to do. We, you know, we, we, we pressed a little bit. Um, and again, they played a whole game running up and down pressing, and, and that's that's not easy. With, with Derek and Dominique coming off the bench, what, how are they progressing right now at this time? I think they both played well. I mean, Derek is still trying to make hard plays instead of just making an easy pass or an easy play. Um, but he shoots the ball, he's long, he can go get balls. And Dominic is just way better than he was a year ago. A year ago, they did not guard him. Literally, just said, let him shoot. Now, if you leave him open, he's making those shots. Now, what added level of, of challenge is it at this time of year just to not have to only figure out who your five best guys playing together are, but to have to do that twice? Well, the good news is that other guy we start playing against is going to have to figure out what these 10 guys or 12 are and what, how one unit plays versus how another unit plays. What are they doing in pick and rolls? What are they doing on post-ups? Well, this group plays one way. This group plays another way. So the issues I'm going to have, the other coach is going to have too. Have you expected to restart at 0-0 going in? If, if we were going to go to the young team against the veterans, I was going to do that, yes. What's been the hardest? Uh, I wanted, in practice, when I went vets against the rookies, they it's been competitive. So that's why I wiped the score out. I didn't want one team to think, you know, we're down 15, 18, or whatever it was. I just said, wipe it out at 0 0. Let's see them compete. What's been the hardest thing with, with these players and trying to get them into that platoon mindset versus the usual substitution pattern? I don't know. We're going to find out. We haven't done it yet today. We just played a bunch of guys. But I mean, like during, you know, from the summer on, as, you, as this evolves. I don't know yet. I got to get in games and do it. There are going to be issues that we'll have that I'm going to have to deal with, and there are going to be issues that other coaches are going to have, he's going to have to deal with. How we finish games, we haven't gone over that yet. We're just now getting to where we're going to grow, how we're going to grind it out, how we're going to play. We just started that yesterday. So, um, yeah, I'm pleased with them, but like I said, I'm. It is so early. We're ahead based on the, the fact that we did go to the Bahamas. We're ahead by the simple fact I've got guys coming back for the first time. You know, so now all of a sudden there's a little less anxiety. And that bleeds down to the freshmen. It makes me less anxious because I see that these guys are comfortable. Then it becomes just, okay, you got to compete at a higher level. John, they said last week you wanted to see Carl fight more. Yeah. Have you seen that in the last week? Still has a ways to go. Really does, but he is so skilled. He fumbled balls today. There were some one-handed catches. There's some rebounds he didn't bring in. Um, you know, plays like that. You know, he's th those are plays that are easily made. Go make those. Um, I thought Willie did some good things today. Willie just is a different soul now. He's out there, and he, you know, we're, you saw we were switching pick and rolls with him. I may even switch pick and rolls with. Um, Carl, make him guard, make him move his feet, you know. Last question. Cal, would you ever? Say again? Well, I don't know if you remember some of our blue-white games, like Terrace Jones had 50. <laughs> you remember some of the blue-white games? Like this is one where we tried to guard each other. Got a few breakouts. Reality of it is, in the half court, we're hard to score against. You know why? You're not getting anything near the basket. 
So now you got to take jumpers. You got to figure out where you can get drives and try to get fouled. Like I told Tony, I don't know if we're just that bad offensively or if we're hard to score against. I think early on in the season, we're going to have to rely on our defense that we can really make it hard on the other guy to score. Let's get some breakouts. Um, but. Cal, if, if you're getting to the point where you're playing 10, 11 guys, would you ever consider red a kid that maybe wasn't going to get in? in that's, that's a player's decision. I would never. If a young man wanted to do that, they'd have to explain why and if that were what they wanted to do. But you know what's great about playing here? You only have to have one good year. <laughs> you only have to have one good year. You don't have to have five good years. No one playing under me has four good years. You only have to have one. Some guys are ahead mentally and physically. It doesn't matter if you, you didn't play for a year or two. How about this? Or three. Now, one year you have your breakout. See ya. Kids are all on different timetables. You know, it's just, you know, the normal thing. Everywhere else, freshmen and sophomores don't play much. Here we got spoiled. Like, they're all playing. So now you get a couple that maybe aren't playing as much. Yet they're still very talented and they're going to make it. Both of them. I think Dominic and Derek. And at the end of the day, if something happens, there's an injury, something, somebody has to step back, I have all the confidence putting them in. Do you understand that without Dominic, we probably don't beat Michigan? He took Skowskis out of the game. So... Much better player, and so is Derek. Thanks, folks.